mierda! ¡Bonita! start with this the continued confusion centered around who is sky nicholson gonna be fighting next and i know i know it's a bit soon because sky just fought she fought this past weekend but eddie hearn and frank warren have a gentleman's agreement in place for nicholson versus chapman eddie hearn spoke to no smoke boxing and he told them sky nicholson versus raven chapman i have a gentleman's agreement with george warren to do sky nicholson against raven chapman if that is the fight that the wbc orders i would like to see a female fight on the Riyadh season cards that could land in october the problem that same eddie hearn said that tiara brown is the mandatory challenger via the WBC, not Raven Chapman. So why would the WBC order the Chapman fight instead of the Brown fight if Tiara Brown is the mandatory? I'm okay with either fight, and I've already said that. I think one fight is a bit more dangerous than the other. It's not the point that there are two unbeaten fighters waiting in the queue for Sky Nicholson heralds what I said a few videos ago and a few months that second only to Amanda Serrano, Sky is the most recognizable featherweight in the division. The only featherweight more recognizable and well-known than Sky is Amanda, but Amanda's not gonna be a featherweight for what remains of this year. Frankly, I don't think she's coming back. I don't think she has to. She's been there and done that. She's been undisputed. She's got bigger fish to fry, and I think she's finished. Sooner or later, she's gonna drop the belts that she has. Back to Sky. It's not often that a pure boxer, a defensively-minded fighter, has star quality. It's really not often. Floyd Mayweather was an exception, but not the norm. So as Sky progresses, fight by fight, and she's a champion now, she's developing a charisma to her, a star quality. She fought like a champion yesterday. She looked like a champion. I've said in previous instances that her calling out Amanda Serrano, even if it didn't result in a fight, it did lend itself to Sky Nicholson's profile. It got her the kind of attention that Sarah Liegman isn't getting, Sophia Leish, Karis Ardingstall, even Raven Chapman, that in terms of promotion, she's promoted way better and promoted herself way better than they have. It's a blessing in disguise that she never got the Serrano fight because if she would have got it, she would have lost. Amanda would have derailed all the progress that she has been making. It's a blessing in disguise that she didn't get what she wanted and she didn't get that fight. They were cheering for her in Philadelphia yesterday. They were cheering for Sky Nicholson. The audience took to her and her performance, I have to admit, I did a little bit too because it's not often that a pure boxer can find that happy medium between staying in character, staying that defensively minded pure boxer, but being entertaining at the same time. Sky managed to do that. Who should she fight next? I don't have a preference. I could go for either a Tiara Brown fight or a Raven Chapman fight. But if we're talking about should, the should of it, who should Raven fight next? She should fight Tiara because Tiara's more beatable. She's older, she's slower, and I don't think she's got the right base style for the job. It's not saying there aren't risks. There are always risks at this level, especially when you're facing an unbeaten up and comer who's hungry and has been waiting in the queue for a long time for their time. She's strong. That's what it is. If you let her get inside on you, she can bust you up there because she's strong. Though she has noticeably slower feet than Sky Nicholson, she's not as quick to the draw. She's not as fast. Not as fast on the move and not as quick on a draw. Sky can beat her. Sky can out hustle her. So if we're talking about who should she fight to stay in the winner's bracket, and in the best interests of staying a champion, then Tiara would be the way to go. In the realm of should, that's who I think she should fight. Get her out the way. And so without 
Amanda Serrano there to derail Sky Nicholson. Sky kind of has the run of the place because she's more recognizable and more well promoted than any of the other unbeaten up and comers at this wake. More so than Raven Chapman, more so than Karis Hardingstall. And bear in mind, Karis beat her in the amateurs. She's the A side to all of them, not just because she's a champion, but because people actually know her. She beat them all to an alphabet title. She became a world champion before all of them. They're at her mercy unless they can pick up alphabet titles of their own within the next calendar year. Get on an even playing field. That's the way I see it. Sky Nicholson is coming into her own and looking good doing it. It was a sensational showing yesterday, and she needs more performances like that to win even more people over because the Philly crowd took to her. See how many more people she can turn into fans. Men's heavyweight news, a peculiar bit of intel by way of the WBC as Deontay Wilder rises in the World Boxing Council's ranked standings and is still eligible for a title shot. Though after two consecutive losses, both demoralizing in their own way, does he actually want one? Deontay Wilder has risen in the World Boxing Council's rankings despite two straight defeats and remains eligible for an immediate heavyweight title shot. Immediate? The bronze bomber moved up one place due to the World Boxing Council's ruling that anyone challenging another organization's title must be removed from the World Boxing Council's list. This means Anthony Joshua facing Daniel Dubois for the IBF title in September is dropped, despite previously being the number one contender. Well, they couldn't wait to get him out of there. If we're honest with ourselves and honest with each other, Anthony has never had the rapport with the World Boxing Council that Wilder has had mostly, I'd say mostly, because he was never WBC champion, whereas Wilder for a time, he was. And this is partial, I mean, this is... This is brazen. That honor to fight for the title immediately now goes to former champion Tyson Fury. However, Fury is not mandatory, despite having a rematch clause to face current WBC ruler Oleksandr Yusik in December. It's a complicated situation that is also largely unfathomable in Wilder's case due to his form. It's another guy the WBC sweet on. So after Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder, they jumped on his nuts. They want to have six judges to score the fight instead of three. They want to use instant replay. You don't normally advocate this much for this many. Where was this attitude for Oshaki Foster versus Robson Kinsaysa? And all of your novel ideas, your bright ideas, why weren't you advocating that you use six judges for that fight. Oshaki Foster was just as much a WBC champion as Tyson Fury used to be. As Deontay Wilder used to be. Deontay Wilder losing against Joseph Parker and Zile Zhang in December and June is not a recognizable world championship worthy run. Wilder's record since 2020 leaves a lot to be desired. With four losses and only one victory, only a solitary knockout of Robert Hellenius, no longer ranked in the WBC top 40 backs up any claims Wilder has to compete for his old green and gold belt. And yet what you're saying is this guy can fight for the green belt immediately. Immediately after what? Think about this for a second. Wilder lost to Tyson Fury in early 2020 and since then he's only won one fight. One, he lost one, the second one. fight to Fury. He lost the third. He rebounded off the loss to Robert Hellenius but he lost his subsequent two fights. So that's saying that in four years, four going on five. There's only one, one fight. Despite everything mentioned above, Wilder goes from 15th to 14th in the past month. The four major sanctioning bodies have discussed the possibility of featuring the other champions in their ratings. If this were the case, Wilder undoubtedly wouldn't be eligible for a world title shot as a top 15 ranked contender. Additionally, every WBA, IBF, and WBO champion would feature above the American in the current standings. That's if they do that. Here today, they only do that with the women. They only do that with the women's ratings. Rate other champions from other organizations. They don't do that with the men. They're debating if they should. Wilder needs a victory to get back in the mix. Having recently been linked to a move to Bridger weight, champion Lawrence O'Coley accepted the challenge of facing Wilder after World Boxing News got the green light from Mauricio Suleiman for the 38-year-old to contest for the 224-pound title if he so wished, without a response from Wilder before a scheduled purse bid with mandatory and interim champion Kevin Lorena, O'Coley seems set 
to move on. I think Wilder has moved on. For all of these moving parts that we're hearing about, that Wilder moved up from 15 up to 14, and if he so chooses, he can get an immediate shot at the WBC title. That is... After Usyk fights Fury again. Or was shot at Bridgeway. After the Lauren Socoli versus Kevin Lorena fight. For me and my money, Wilder's moved on. I don't think Wilder's coming back to the sport of boxing off of those two losses. I don't. I mean, the demoralizing lopsided decision loss, the Joseph Parker, the violent knockout loss, the Zile Zhang. I figure if Wilder comes back, if he does, because he might not, Maybe he gives his fans a farewell fight? Maybe. So he can retire on a win? Maybe. That's if he were to come back. There's a strong possibility that he doesn't because he's all tied up in this court battle, this restraining order business with his ex. No reason to come back. The Saudis are paying out big cash, big money to fighters that are willing to fight, but fighters that are willing to fight in dangerous fights. And he just did two times and he lost both times. Now you can't come back to America and fight some ham and egg guy on pay-per-view and make money that way. You tried that with Robert Hellenius and it didn't sell anything. So I figured this guy might be done. He might be finished because if you can't make no money, you can't make money comfortably. Just be honest, Wilder's not gonna beat anybody good at this point. I think he checked out mentally. I think he's checked out all the way out. They can afford him as many world title opportunities at as many weights as they like. I don't think he wants them. They're trying to move heaven and earth to get this guy back into the mix. I don't think he wants to be. Did you see what Zhang did to him? 38 years old coming off of back-to-back -back losses? I don't think so. So as ridiculous as all of this is, it's much ado about nothing. For all these opportunities they're affording him, I don't think he wants them. I think he's finished. As I've said from day one, the pressure's on AJ. He's the guy who's got, in most people's eyes, is the favourite. Um, he's the guy who's got the, the most experience in most people's eyes. He's a former two-time world champion. He's cut, he's got a good run of form. Right. I think he's I think his opponents of late have been of a higher standard than AJ's. And he's a good boxer, Kogovic. Kogovic is a better boxer than, than AJ is, in my opinion. Bullshit! There is absolutely nothing to suggest. There's nothing in either their amateur or professional records that suggests Philippe Hergovic is in any way, shape, or form a better boxer than Anthony Joshua. That's why Frank finished it off with the token, in my opinion. No! That changes everything. As amateurs, Philippe Hergovic won the bronze, whereas Anthony Joshua won the gold. As professionals, Anthony's been a champion. He's been a unified champion already two times, whereas Philippe's never been a champion at all. Unless you're counting interim titles. Which most people don't. The actual function of an interim title in this day and age yeah. is either a champion in the absence of the full champion or a segue to become a full champion. But you're not a full champion yourself for having held an interim title. No, there is absolutely nothing to suggest that Philippe Hergovic in any way, shape or form was on the level of Anthony. So why would Frank say that? He's a promoter. Being honest, I don't even hold it against Frank. He's got a job to do like we all do, and it's his job to turn this place into a circus. Big up his man. Say whatever you need to say to talk him up and sell the fight. In the moment, even if it means saying that Philippe is in any way, shape or form a better boxer, than Anthony Joshua. Okay. All right, Frank, it's supposed to be sort of a, a victory by proxy that if Philippe is better than Anthony and Daniel just beat Philippe in his last fight, that makes Daniel better than Anthony. Better by proxy. Is that how that's supposed to work? It was a guy, I saw a guy, he goes by the name Wayne Smith. Wayne Smith said, I keep seeing stuff about sparring rumors from Dubois bashing AJ. I watched AJ and Dubois spar at Sheffield personally for five rounds twice over two days. This was years ago, so has little bearing on the now. On that occasion, though, one man didn't want to get into the ring and had to be coaxed into it, even saying he lost his gum shield at one point. Gee, I wonder who that was. Ben didn't really throw anything and just tucked up. That man wasn't AJ. Just saying. So why is that important? The sparring session between Anthony and Daniel years ago, the one we'd been hearing about for years, how Daniel supposedly got the best of him. Why is that important? Yeah, why is that important? I thought you said you don't go off of sparring rumors. I don't. I'm just highlighting that for all the hullabaloo about Daniel knocking out Anthony in sparring, not only did Anthony Joshua himself deny that happened, Wayne Smith is denying that happened. He's saying the opposite. 
He's saying Anthony got the better of Daniel. Why does it matter? It's a sparring session from years ago. Because where did that rumor originate? Who started spreading it around? Frank! Years ago, when he first signed Daniel, to promote him, he attached his name to Anthony Joshua's oh. on the premise that he got the better of him in sparring. And that's how they ramped up promotion for Daniel Dubois, which is why I always felt this has been the common exercise for everybody the last couple of years. To promote Wilder, they started talking about Anthony. To promote Fury, they started talking about Anthony. And to promote Daniel, same thing. Routine exercise all based on a lie. What looks to be a lie? That he banged him up in sparring. You'd think they would lie about something like that. I think Frank would. Frank just told you Philippe Pergovic is a better boxer than Anthony Joshua, in his his opinion and i don't think frank is a dummy he's been in this sport long enough he knows the good fighters from the bad ones the bad from the good the good from the great and i don't think for a second he believes what he's saying no he knows he knows anthony's better than philippe but he's got a job to do and a fight to sell just like he has a fighter to promote so if exaggerating a little bit about a sparring session if that's the difference between daniel getting positive press and not getting positive press frankie boy don't mind he don't mind the little white lie it's a little white lie between a promoter and a boxing community reality i think aj's gonna knock daniel out yeah daniel looked great against jarrell miller he even looked great against philippe pagovic but none of those guys or Anthony Joshua. Moreover, Daniel ate one too many right hands for me in his last fight, the Philippe Pagovic fight. I don't think Philippe punches as hard or as fast as Anthony. If you charge Anthony like you charged Hergovic, he's gonna land his right hand, Philippe did, and he's slower than Anthony. All these things they say about Anthony, or they used to say about Anthony, that he's slow, cumbersome, robotic, yeah, that actually applies more to Philippe Pagovic than it does Anthony Joshua. The one thing Frank said that I did agree with is that the pressure's on Anthony because he's the more experienced fighter, he's the cash cow, the money man at the weight. But when has that not been the case? I mean, I think out of the amateurs into the pros, the pressure's been on Anthony and the way that they moved him. When has that not been the case? When has the pressure not been on Anthony? It's always been on Anthony. By now? I think that he's used to it. And so he's caught his second wind. Dang that old swagger. Back to his old self. Devastating, intimidating. The landlord is back, and while the pressure is on Anthony, he's been dealing with it. He's dealt with it so far. There's nothing new. It's just another day at the office. For the landlord. Daniel Dubois has improved, grown as a fighter, grown in confidence. I won't deny him his plaudits because he deserves them. He beat unbeaten Jarrell Miller, he beat unbeaten Philippe Hergovic, an Olympian, a bronze medalist. So not all Olympians and not all medalists are created equal. There is a disparity between a Philippe Hergovic and an Anthony Joshua. There's a difference, and we all can see it. You can pretend you don't while you still can, but September's right around the corner. That fight's gonna be here before you know it. You can't fight the fight for Daniel. What I think is with Don Charles in his corner, Daniel's going to use the same kind of aggression we've been seeing in his last couple of fights, but this time, it's going to backfire.